Tonight, I'm joined by ESPN's Brooke Weisbrod. Thanks for being with us, Brooke. We appreciate uh, your time. Thanks for having me on, Rob. The question everyone seems to be asking is why this decision was made, considering that marijuana, of course, is not a performing enhancing drug. We've seen that scandal countless times. We understand that it's, it's banned, but why is marijuana banned? Again, it's not a performing enhancing substance like others. I couldn't agree with you more, and I think that's the same page everyone is on that is saying, why why is this continuing to be on the list? But according to the World Anti-Doping Agency, marijuana has to make two of the three uh, lists in order to be a prohibited substance. Either it has to be a health risk, it has to pr uh, enhance performance, or it has to violate the spirit of the sport. To me, it does none of those things. Uh, marijuana is not a performance enhancing drug. We've seen the NBA, uh, the NFL, Major League Baseball, all kinds of leagues, you know, remove that from even testing the athletes and, you know, from a human and emotional level to understand what she was going through and learning about the death of her biological mother to use marijuana as reducing her anxiety, her depression. You know, I think on a human level, we need to actually look at that for what it is and look at the mental health and really realize how important that is. And for me, these these rules from the World Anti-Doping Agency, they are highly outdated. And I know that there's been groups of athletes who have gone to them and tried to campaign for marijuana to be removed from the banned list. You know, to me, it's just a, it, it's an unnecessary stigma in the world of, of sports, especially with athletes. It's a way to treat all kinds of chronic pain. It's a way to not use opioids. It's a way to help depression, anxiety, all types of things. So I think it, we need to take a new look and look at it with a new lens because marijuana does not deserve to be on the prohibited list. And again, she was smoking it in, uh, in Oregon where recreational marijuana use is, is uh, legal. Let me ask you this procedurally. Can she appeal this or is she kind of throwing her hands up and going, okay, those are the rules and I'll bow out gracefully. Well, I think we, we saw the grace that she had today was accepting her one month suspension, suspension from the Olympic Committee. And, you know, let's hope that she is still able to compete in some form or fashion because the Olympic trials don't start actually, or the track and field, excuse me, does not start until June, July 30th. So she still has time to compete in some events. And honestly, from a business perspective, if I'm NBC, I'm doing everything I can to get her in every race that I can because all eyeballs are going to be on that television when Shakari Richardson lines up. Uh, this is this is a, a business decision when you're talking about ratings. So I think if you're NBC, you might want to campaign the Olympic Committee and do your best to get her back on the line. That is such a great point uh, about ratings. They, they spend a lot of money to air them. They want as many eyeballs on the TV screen uh, as possible. Do you think all that public pressure and considering the emotional reason she admitted to, to using the marijuana will be enough to maybe finally change the rule? Or is the committee just saying this is what we do and that's the rule and that's that? Right now, it does sound like that's what the committee is saying. They're they're saying rules are rules. You know, she has to face the suspension. You know, but if we look at the way that not only she's been treated, but Naomi Osaka at the uh, at the French Open, you know, backing out because of mental health reasons, and we saw the criticism that she took. And you know, I just think it's a really unfair way to view uh, coping with with tragedy. And coping with anxiety, and we need to look at cannabis in an entirely new lens because we're seeing it explode in this country with new stores being open and people investing in it and making billions of dollars left and right. Yet we can't have athletes use it to treat any number of illnesses or chronic pain that they have. It's, you know, to me, it's ridiculous. It's highly outdated, and we've seen just such a a negative stigma about it over the years and to me that comes with a, a, a lack of education and knowledge about what it really can do for you. It does seem like a double standard to play and that's why it's caused so much outrage uh, today. Thank you so much for giving us a few minutes. We, uh, we appreciate it and we'll continue to follow this story. It's definitely uh, fascinating. We'll see how it turns out. Thanks, Brooke. Yes, it is. Thanks, Rob.